Now what I'm required to prove is that um, for n equals k plus 2, which is the next step, um, I have to say that s of k plus 2 is going to be greater than or equal to k plus 2 factorial. All right, how do I do it? Well, what I'm going to begin with, um, just like I did for um, an earlier part in the question, I'm going to say, well, let's just have a look at the left-hand side. There's so many ways you could do this, right? Um, but I think that um, working with the left-hand side is going to be fairly straightforward because it will allow me to use the inductive hypothesis very directly, okay? So I'm going to consider the left-hand side it's equal to s of k plus 2. Well, from the question, by definition, you look at the previous term, that's sk plus 1, um, and then you multiply by that same subscript, and then you look, you multiply that by the term before. So um, here was the previous term, and there was the term before that, okay? Now, based on the uh, inductive hypothesis right here, and I'll just highlight it just to make it very obvious, right? What I can do is I can replace my sk and my sk plus 1 with something smaller, these square roots of factorials, right? So since I'm replacing it with something smaller, I'll pop in the greater than or equal to sign. Here comes uh, this term here. It's going to be this term here is going to be smaller than this term here. Um, and then I've got a k plus 1. And then uh, this term here, whoopsie daisy, my pencil's playing up today. Um, this term here is smaller than this term here. So that's why the inequality um, is preserved. So I'll just highlight those. That's the comparison that I'm making. Okay, pause, right? From here, there's not many lines of working if you know the direction to helpfully go in, right? Um, but if you are just kind of blindly simplifying, um, you're just gonna go round and round in circles. So. Look at this line carefully and think about what we can do to it that will sort of um, get us helpfully towards the goal, okay? Remember, this is the goal here. We want to have something like the square root of k plus 2 factorial on the right-hand side or something bigger because then I can just have a chain of inequalities. How am I going to do that? Well, um, we've already used the inductive hypothesis. Um, I should say that, shouldn't I? I should say by assumption. Here we go. So we've all u already used that. So in order to try and um, go further, um, I need to either put, draw on some stuff I know about inequalities and um, real numbers and algebraic um, properties in general, or I look to the question for some clues. And I hope you remember this is part three of a three-parter. So you've got part one and part two sort of nestled there, which even though, let's just go back, even though part three does not explicitly say use part one or two, um, you should kind of always assume that a, a multi-parter is there to, to get you to refer to those earlier steps, um, which is very fitting for a question by, uh, of proof by induction, right? See what I did there? Now, part one, uh, it really was just a warm-up. It's just like, can you understand how this thing works? Part two is the key, um, and you should be able to recognize that because you've got an inequality here, and part two was also an inequality, and look, it's got square roots flying around in it. It's clearly going to be useful here, okay? So let's go back to my working for part three. And what I'm gonna jot down here on the side is that result that I just proved earlier on. It's that the square root of x plus x is greater than or equal to the square root of x, x plus one. How can I manipulate what I have on my right-hand side here in order to use this part two result? What I see is that um, because of the direction of my inequalities, right, what I want is to be able to replace this with something smaller, right? So uh, you can see on the right, left hand side here of this um, inequality, um, I can make this statement. If I can find this over here, I can replace it with something smaller, namely what's on the right hand side. So in other words, I'm looking for something of this format, right? Uh, square root of x plus x kind of thing, right? Can I find something and the sum uh, added to um, its own square root somewhere on the left-hand side, um, or somewhere on the, this right-hand side, I should say. And hopefully that kind of clue is enough for you, right? There's only, on, on this right-hand side, there's only one thing that is not underneath a square root. Um, there's only one thing that could be the candidate easily anyway for this x term, and that is this, x, this k plus one. You see that? That's the only thing that's not under a square root. So it is our best candidate to be x. Um, so long as I can have that k plus 1 and a square root of k plus 1, then I should be able to make use of this, um, of this result in part 2. And hopefully you can see without too much difficulty, there's a k plus 1 right here, 
there is also a square root of k plus one just hiding underneath this first term. I just need to tease apart, I need to unroll this factorial just a little bit, okay? So let's go ahead and do that. I can say square root of, uh, let's write in purple because um, I've used purple in the previous line. Square root of um, k plus one factorial is by definition k plus one times k factorial, right? Let's complete the square root over there. Um, and then you've got uh, everything on the right hand side which I haven't um, touched. So I've got my k plus one right there. And then I've got the square root of k factorial there, okay? Now what's great about this is you can see, number one, um, here are the two bits that I was looking for, right? Um, here's the k plus one that I saw um, not underneath the square root. And then here's the square root of k plus one. It's just got this extra term that I can just factorize out, right? And what's even better is that the thing to factorize out um, is square root of k factorial is over here as well. So therefore I'll have a common factor, which is even better. So let's make that obvious because I need to, um, this is a proved question, right? Um, I'll break this square root into two square roots, like so. Um, everything over here is unchanged. And then I can factorize out this, uh, here we go, this square root of k factorial, which leaves me with the k plus one terms by, the, by themselves, okay? So let's just put that, I'll put that square root of k factorial in green, because that's what I just highlighted it with. And then here comes some big brackets. Um, you've got the square root of k plus one, and then you've got k plus one there's the factorization. So you can see all those lines of working were to get me into this format right here. You can see um, that this is parallel to this. It's just that, oh, why was that so messy? There we go. Um, this is my square root of, see Daisy? This is my square root of x plus x. It's just that x equals k plus one. All right, so I'm pretty much ready to go, right? This is, um, this is the conclusion I, I'm just gonna use part two at this step here. It's a square root of k factorial. Um, if, let me just drag this with us so we can see it in the working. If I'm saying that x equals k plus one, <clears throat> what happens when you substitute into the right-hand side and, and, and use that result? Um, you're gonna have the square root of x is equal to k plus one, so there it is. And what is x plus one? Well, it's k plus one plus one. So it's k plus two. And then I complete the square root there. And you're like, oh, sweet. Like that's kind of it, right? Look at what I was required to prove. It's k plus two factorial. There it is, k plus two times k plus one times k factorial. So that's it, square root of k plus two factorial, I've got an S, K plus two on the left-hand side, which left was left unchanged um, as required. So, full stop, I'm finished. I guess I should just conclude um, just by saying that I've invoked the principle of mathematical induction. There's no long essay required like there was back when I did mathematical induction. Okay, so, I hope you found that helpful. Let me just conclude by saying, like let me sort of tie this up in a neat bow. Right at the beginning I said, why would I give you a question that I'm very confident you will not get this exact format of question. I think it would be exceedingly cheeky if this year's um, HSC exam committee gave you a second order recursive formula and asked you to prove it by induction the way that we've just done. Even though I don't think you will get a second order recursive formula because look, the syllabus very explicitly calls out first order, right? And it doesn't say like, oh, you can't use second order, but if they were going to just let them give you whatever order recursive formula they wanted, they probably wouldn't have explicitly called out first order recursive formula, right? So why am I assigning this question even though I'm confident you won't get this exact type? Well, I think even though you won't get this exact type of question, the style of question is something you will encounter. By which I mean, this is an application of familiar knowledge, proof by induction, in an unfamiliar context. Because you have to do this second order thing, right? It changes your test uh, and assume steps. The steps that you're used to doing on like mental autopilot, you're like, ah, there's no real thought needing to be applied in the test and assume steps, but actually, there are, and what I, I don't want you to come away from this saying, oh, Mr. Wu said, we, if we get a second order recursive formula, all you need to do is like the rule is, you just have to test two things and assume two things, right? That's not what this is about. What this is about is, did you know the point of having an assumption in, the, in proof by induction at all? Like, why do we do that? And the answer is we do an assumption because that's the foundation that you lay to do your proof step, right? Well, if your proof step is gonna go two steps back, 
your assumption will also need to go two steps back because those are the two steps that are going to be your foundation for your proof step, right? So if you really understood what the assume was about, then you would have reflexively said, oh, I need to do two cases here and not just one. I, I need K and K plus one. And then my proof step will be K plus two, right? So it's not about memorizing, yes, for a second order, you do two steps. It's about, do you really know why there's an assumption? Do you really know why you would use the exponential form of a complex number rather than the polar form, um, the trigonometric form? Do you really know why will we express vectors as like, you know, AB with a, with a line over it, or why we would, um, you know, just use the, a single point and uh, a single, you know, indication to have position vector or displacement vector. Um, do you really know why the dot product is so useful? Then you'll know when to apply it. That's what this question is really about.